audience. Hi, followers. Hello, nobody's here yet. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Let me just say to the void, though. Let me just say to the void, I am so exhausted. Hi, welcome to the third live edition of How Do You Paint? I don't, I never know where to look. I'll just look at myself. Hey, Mr. Malicioso. Third live edition of How Do You Paint? And I've been working on Manet's Olympia. Uh, my version, you know, lots of painters like to do this one and uh, play around with meaning and text and art history. And uh, mine is Olympia and the maid in my painting are a couple. Do I have to say this at the beginning of every show? Mine as well. Get the new people up to speed. Hi, Vision Flow Creations. You made it, you made it. So did I. We're here. Thank you for sharing this space with me. I'm doing Manet's Olympia, and it is called Remote Olympia. Olympia will be holding a remote control. Whoops. Backwards land. Backwards land. She's holding a remote control, and her girlfriend is saying, Honey. Would you please turn that off? We haven't talked all day. And Olympia, with her blank stare at the viewer, is saying, yeah, just a minute. The game's almost over. Actually, that was too express. That, was, that had too much expression. She's more like, yeah, just a minute. The game's almost over. It's nice having that little rest. So, yeah, everybody, everybody, I, it's been rough, man. It's been tough. Um, this painting is, it's been interesting. You know, when I paint with you guys live, I'm more concerned. I'm more anxious, probably, about my performance and not being boring and less concerned about the perform how I'm performing with the painting. So then after the show, I look at it, I'm like, wow, it's so loose and so free. So that's good for me, you know, because then I get to start with a loose and free base to get all fuck, excuse me, I'm not supposed to swear, to get all freaking confused and uptight and overly controlled. Hi, Arisa. Hey, everybody, if anybody's got any questions, please ask. Comments, LOLs, anything encouraging, an encouraging word. Don't tell me negative things because I can't, I can't take it. Hi, Arisa. So I kind of want to take the phone off the hook here and show you guys the close-up since I don't have a camera person. Um, I'm going to show you what I did and how it went all wrong. Encouraging word. Thank you. Aw, thank you. You guys are so supportive. Ah! I'm going to show you some close-ups of what went wrong, and maybe we're going to see if we can fix it today. So, or I'll tell you my ideas. Here. So, um, backing up... Here we have, okay, this probably goes crooked, but we have Olympia laying on the bed. We have her girlfriend. They're home for the day. She's doing laundry. Um, she, she, all her clothes are dirty, so she's wearing a bra. And I thought I was going to do this laundry basket full of clothes. Okay, not an easy, not an easy thing to paint. Fabric folds What's it called? Not foliage. Um, 
drapery, that sort of thing is really difficult to paint. Imagine painting it crumpled up in a laundry basket and then with patterns. What I decided to do was just make shapes of without the folds. I did one with folds. It doesn't look like fabric. It looks like a rose, if that. And so I decided I was not going to try to do folds and then wrap patterns around the folds. That's beyond my capabilities. You know, stuff like that. No, 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 not, especially not in a laundry basket. So what I ended up doing was just doing um, flat planes of color with patterns on them. And then I hated it. It was so uptight. So I started scribbling on it. I hope this is interesting. This was going to be like some underwear with pink, with red hearts. And then I, then I, have them falling out of the basket because her heart is falling out of her because she is being... Oh, thank you, Orisa. Yeah, I like the hearts falling down. It's sort of a sad grief thing because she has an unavailable girlfriend. So, um, I'm not happy with the laundry basket. I spent like three hours, no, probably five, on this bullshit and I do like the pajama sheep um, yeah nice sperm I thought it was it looked like sperm too which is good for the painting because you know she's a prostitute and maybe they have to um, buy sperm to have a kid so yeah the sperm has a lot of deep meaning hmm Anyway, you guys, this is what happened is I tried to mess up my uptight fabric. I am all, God, am I explaining too much? This is what happened. This damn laundry basket just sucked me in and I'm still sucked in. You can feel it. I'm in the vortex of it. Maybe I just need to move on. So then I did this. Now this looks realistic. Sperm is always good. Fertile protein source. Yeah. Vision flow creations. What are you saying no to? What did I say that you're saying no to? I'm not following it. I don't know. Why are you guys saying no? Tell me what you're saying no to. I need to know. I need to know what you're saying no to so I can listen. Ah, uh, that I'm spending too much time on the laundry basket? This is a difficult relationship we're having, isn't it? Okay, thank you. You're not explaining too much. It's fine. Okay, thanks, you guys. See, I don't want to rush it, yet I don't want to be boring. So check out this drapery. Now, here's an example. Okay, thanks, thanks. Okay, thanks, you guys. Thanks, you're fine. Uh, all right, we're happy to hear you say anything. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Drop it. Uh, yeah, so here is the drapery where I actually loosely painted it. And hey, looks pretty kind of realistic, doesn't it? And here, somehow, I got out of the flow of being able to just kind of loosely paint what I see. And I, yeah, went here. So then I tried to loosen it up by scribbling abstract paint over now, I feel like in some ways this might be cheating. It feels like my trick for not being able to paint very well realistically. And it's like the only thing you can do if you can't paint really well realistically is just copy and illustrate. Um, and, but then it's so tight and uptight, so then I scribble out and then just some, do some like illustration over. And I feel like I need to expand beyond that. So, and I'm getting better at it. You know, all the copying and illustrating has helped me with my representational skills. So, yeah, scribbles. Scribbles loosen things up. So anyway, I went home with a dark feeling inside 
a heavy feeling inside about the laundry basket. When I paint something that I'm not satisfied with, it's a crushing blow to my sense of meaning, self-worth. Um, I, when I work really, really fast, when I work fast, Sashina, I do loosen up. Um, but it takes more skill to like work fast. Like, you know, it's just, it's just technique. <laughs> um, so anyway, then I was in the lounge cause he, I'm at Mills College right now, I should say. Uh, one of the artists in residence with the A P I A plus P plus I art plus process plus ideas residency program. What we're doing right now is a lot of processing. Uh, but your style is not a realistic style anyway. It's a stay version of life that comes across very clear. So I think it's fine. Fine. It's fine. But. I think part of being an artist, I forget where I read this, there was a quote by some artist about constant state of dissatisfaction. So that's just a given. What am I going to do about it? Am I going to kill myself? Probably not. Um, you seem really hard on yourself. Does that help, the pressure? I don't know. Uh, Wow, you guys are getting really um, involved in this one. I don't think being hard on myself and the pressure helps at all. Actually, this was something I was thinking about. We will get to painting at some point here. Um, but this is, the, this is the ideas part. Confidence comes from not competence, but from not caring if you fail. So the person asked Sashina if being hard on myself helps me, like paint probably is what they meant. Uh, excuse me, I just need some water. So I'm a better painter when I'm in a self-accepting mood and that takes a deep level of letting go. I mean, this is why painting is a spiritual practice. This is why making art is a spiritual practice. Because you must confront your ego. And you must let go of caring how you appear. And you're doing it even if there's not anybody actually watching, you're making art to be seen. So you're doing it in front of people. It's, it's, it's a tough road, but not as boring as meditating. Um, truth, yes. So what I was gonna tell you was I, after I went home, with a heavy heart and had dreams all night of doing this show, the, the initials A H D Y P were just floating across my consciousness all night. H D Y P. How do you paint? So that was productive dreaming. And, and I came in and I looked at the laundry basket and I'm not feeling it. It feels, especially because, you know, it's like this one area of a painting contained all this detail, all this color, and I don't know how to deal with it, and I don't want to paint, I wish I, I don't want to paint, try to paint the folds and the patterns. And then I was in the student lounge where people, the MFAs are leaving and getting rid of stuff, and I saw something. I saw this, and I thought, hey, that fabric is like the fabric, the heart, the, can you see? It's like the hearts on my underwear in the laundry basket. Oh, trippy. I just realized I was using for a rag underwear with hearts. 
See, I'm just soaking everything. It's just information is just coming at me all the time. Everything is like fuel. And that is why I picked painting. I just picked it because it is one rectangle or square where the entire universe can be channeled. I don't need, I don't need a lot of options at a time. There's already an infinite number of options. So you need a good channel. So anyway, I found the cloth and then I was like, hey, hey, why don't I collage a bunch of fabric into the laundry basket? Just glue it on there. Have the folds in real life. Have it be real. And then paint the laundry basket. You know, it's plastic and it has ovals in it. You know how laundry baskets look. Um, and then you'll just have paint over the fabric. And then, I don't know who pulled this doll's pants down like this. It was not me. In fact, I'm feeling, it's weird. Also, this doll with this like blank face with her pants down while I'm painting Olympia. See? I'm in the flow. Hodgepodge. Yeah, I'm gonna hodgepodge it. So, I got other fabrics that are, uh, I've been using in other things too, so it'll tie the work together to some other pieces, because I'll have other pieces with the same pattern. And I'm gonna glue it in there. I'm not going to do that today on camera because that's going to be boring um, watching me cut out and glue fabric, I think. But I think that's a good idea, don't you? Yay or nay? Because the other thing is, is there's paper. Can you see? You can't really see, but there's paper collaged right down here. Okay, somebody's walking by outside my window and she probably thinks I'm crazy. Hi. <laughs> okay, don't come over here now. Okay, she's coming over here. Okay. 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 Thanks. Good. Good. Oh, it's Vivian. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, I'm on. I'm doing an Instagram live video right now, so I can't come out. Oh my God! It's so fun to see you. Okay. Bye. <laughs> funny. I know her. She bought a painting from me and she might go to Mills College. Okay. So what should I work on today? We have, this painting is really troublesome in some ways. Um, I did not, because I was doing it for the show, this painting show, this live painting show, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't planning for it. And the spacing of everything is so messed up. So many thoughts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, have to get my camera person to show you what I'm talking about because, check it out. Whoops, switch around, switch around. So a big part of this painting you see is she's got a mattress and a box spring and big puffy pillows very high up Big bed, big bed. My situation, because I got all screwed up with proportions and placement, is there's no room for anything. There's like, where, definitely not a box spring. So it's like, I have to do the bottom of the mattress right there. So this is supposed to go up and in <laughs> right there. She's like sleeping on like a mat or yeah. And then the draping comes down. 
so the sheets come down. And obviously her butt and legs became a bit smashed, flattened as well. <laughs> um, the pillows. See, now that I'm sharing with you guys what I think is wrong, it's like, why are you tripping? It's not such a big whoop. I mean, these pillows are big and puffy. Her pillow is flat and thin on the bottom. Right? We know it's a bed. Why not not worry about that? Okay. <laughs> I like that your name is Sympathy Fatigue. <laughs> I like that your name is Sympathy Fatigue and you're like, can you just not worry about that? Can you just not be so hard on yourself? You're draining. <laughs> okay. All right. When I'm alone in my head with myself, I create so many problems, not just about painting, but about my life and myself. And when I come on here and have people, and I look at my painting through your eyes, ah, there's Vivian on the thing, and she was just outside the window. Hello. I was just saying, I create so many problems inside my head when I'm alone. And then when I expose them to other people, I realize, Oh, maybe that's not a problem. I'm outside. Art making is problem solving. It definitely is. And problem and redefining. Problem redefining. Like, if I made a mistake by making her mattress this thin, is that a problem to fix? No, the painting now has a new logic. It is my problem to adapt to the new logic of the painting. <laughs> Go with the flow of the mistakes. Anyway, there's a lot left to do on this. And right now I'm feeling like, yes! Hmm. It's an interesting look. Uh, right now, I'm feeling like I need to get the, oh, there's so much white in the original painting, as you can see, and I would like to get the mattress and the sheets, most, get all that white in because it's very confusing. Oh, bye, Sympathy Fatigue. Thanks for stopping by. Um, man, I don't have any more water and I'm so thirsty. You think I could drink my paint water? Probably not. I could take you to the sink with me. Nah, let's keep it, keep it on track. How do you paint? That's the name of the show. With me, your host, Kate White. We are... Making our way through Mayonnaise Olympia. And I think that today I am. The things that are still needed to be done are the cat. See this very shadowy, dark black cat. You're such a hard worker, inspiring. Ugh, only because I have a show coming up. When is it? June 22nd, Mills College. Come on. Come see. Um, me and Constance Hockaday, the other A plus P plus I artist. So I got the black cat to do. I'm going to glue the fabric in another day. Um, but I'm not going to make a black cat. I'm not sure. This is, this is a really weird painting, you know? Like, I don't know. Um... I am going to make the cat orange. 
because I'm partial to the tabby, since I have one. Some of you may know about Sunny, my cat. I was about to go off on a tangent on my cat, but I don't need to do that. So I'm going to have a, a cat. Um, Sunny! I'm gonna have a cat. I do like the tail going up in the air because, and I'm gonna have my cat be orange um, to get some more light over here and to pick up some of Olympia's orangish color of her body. So I'm going to have an orange cat here and, and it's gonna be like looking straight at you with a tail. <laughs> we love cat paintings, yes we do with the tail going up, and the orange tail going up is going to, I never know the word to use for this, um, parallel, relate to, resonate with the um, zigzag spray paint I have going down in the middle. So that'll be a good whatever that thing is called when they kind of look the same in the painting. I look so tired, don't I? I really am. After June 22nd, I'm gonna be a brand new woman. Um, so that's one thing that has to get done. Another thing that has to get done is I need to extend the dog poop wallpaper. If you were here on uh, one of the previous episodes, we painted wallpaper that looked like dog poop as I was painting it. Um, and that needs to get done. I need to extend that all the way up to the top. I am talking way too much, just paint! Jesus! Ah! Paint the cat. Oh, but I was also gonna do the white. Should I do the cat or should I do the white? I think I need to do the white because it's painting and whenever I look at it, it's just like so chaotic because there's just too many lines everywhere. Um, this. I want it to be interesting, and if I had a camera person, anybody wants to be my camera person and get in on this, um, how do you paint empire that we are about to build? Cat, you want me to work on the cat? Hi, Angie. But I think I need to paint a little of the mattress, sheet, etc. I actually have some paint mixed up already. I'm a little more prepared this time. It's just white. It's just, I know. I know you really want me to paint the cat, Vivian, but I can't see anything until I get some, like, get some of the bigger shapes in, you know? You know why I'm procrastinating working on the painting? Okay, wait. All right, thanks. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't ask your opinions if I'm not gonna listen, huh? Uh, I'm procrastinating working on this painting because when I first started, it was kind of a lark because I was doing the painting show, the show that we're, you're watching right now, and it was just sort of a lark. And now the painting is taking on uh, value to me and it's no longer a lark. What I need to do, wow, wouldn't it be amazing if I just kept it as a lark and see how it turns out? Hey, I just set myself free. I just, it's still a lark. Lark is a, a bird. So I'm going to get my palette with a little white tinged with gray, so it's not stark white. And I'm gonna just, the way I do, I, uh, oh. Jeez. Ah! I want some of it to be semi-realistic, but not um, all of it. And it's very hard for me to paint semi-realistic on the painting show. So I think I'm gonna to go to the areas where I'm not gonna have it be realistic and, and do that with you guys. I'm gonna have it be less painterly 
and less paintbrushy and less modeled um, under her body because her body is already very painterly and modeled, sort of modeled, not really, but uh, I'm gonna have the white around her be more just um, flat. So here goes nothing. Oh, jeez. Okay, okay. Um, what the hell am I doing? My brush is too big. Doesn't work. Maybe I should just paint the beginning of paintings on the How Do You Paint Gel. This is stressful. Hope I don't mess it up. All right. You can't see anything. Ah, I have a solution. Look. Now we're a little closer, huh? This is where the camera person would be real nice. Okay. So, yeah. Let's just, let's just put some white in here. I don't know what's going to happen. I already have some folds of dark color, like where the wrinkles are mapped in, you know. Every brush stroke I make, I'm feeling. I'm not coloring this in, I'm feeling them. That's why I breathe like that. I gotta put life in them. <sighs> gotta put life in them, huh? Yeah, hey. That's how you have to do it. You can't just color in unless you're in a coloring book. Hmm. What happens too is, you know, you're painting something that is representational, like what I'm doing right now, you know, and at some point, for me anyway, let me just speak for myself, at some point, this is very awkward, isn't it? At some point, What you're painting, or you're, what you're representing, just turns into paint. You're just, it's like you're painting a door. You're just painting. And, and it's just, then what happens is what takes over is the pleasure of smearing paint. And that's when it gets good. Because you're still representing but that's deep. What's happening is like some sort of non-dual consciousness thing takes over. Wedding witch, hi Autumn. If anybody's trying to get married, and you want to get married up in Mendocino, and have somebody plan your wedding who is like alternative to cheesy, like, heteronormative, patriarchal weddings, such as like our couple here, if they would get married. They probably aren't, I don't see this lasting though for them. Um, go see Wedding Witch. A long sentence. Okay, continuing with my non-dual consciousness, trying to paint something I'm seeing to look like the thing, sort of, but also seeing the paint as its own abstract material. Thing. Okay. All right. I really have to breathe like that. I do that even when I'm alone. If if I am in it, 
If I'm in my head just judging and hating, I'm not breathing at all. I'm just holding my breath. <sighs> okay. Got some, we got some nice, nice skinny little mattress. Not very luxurious at all. Okay, I'm just painting around the shadows I already put in. Huh? You know what else is weird? When I was talking to you, Autumn, on the phone, I was painting these shadows, and now you're here watching me, <laughs> and I'm painting. God, the internet is my head right now. Reality. Stop. Don't. It's just Kate. Just stay with us, okay? <sighs> now, should I paint it all? You can't see what I'm doing. I really could use that. I'll stop saying we need a camera person. I'll just wait for it to happen. Oh yeah, so this yellow drapery, I still have to do the yellow drapery on this side, but because I squinched my whole painting down at, at, to the bottom, I, this whole drapery thing is going to be like that big. It's going to be shrunken. Like, it's going to make zero sense, except in the logic of this painting. And the thing is about painting is people will be like, why is it all smushed down? Is it like, people will like, I might be able to be your camera person. Oh. Interesting. We should talk. We should talk. I wonder how I would act differently if I had an actual person in here. Okay, you guys, here. Now, what I just realized is, okay. I, hey, I got the mattress in. I got the top part of the mattress in. Now I am going to, I don't know if I like it or not. I'm not even evaluating. I'm more evaluating how stupid I sound <laughs> or, if, or how, if this is boring, the show. So, hey, it's cool. Um, yeah. So now I'm gonna, now that I've painted the mattress, I'm going to paint it, oh, Oh yeah, okay, so then it's tucked in. Can you see anything? I guess people, you can't see because also there's all the people's writings on top. Well, hey, if you wanna watch this again, <laughs> if you're obsessed with me, <laughs> um, um, like, uh, you could, you can always go to the Mills, um, what's it called, page, uh, Instagram feed, and you can, um, uh, Jesus, watch this as a story for 24 hours after we're done here. Uh, losing focus, I'm feeling like I'm using the same, I'm using the same brush stroke. The same size brush to do all this, all this painting of the sheets and, uh, eh, you know, and, and the mattress and it's starting to look a little too icky picky. It's a painting term. It's looking a little icky picky. A little meep, 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 meep. I need to have a variety of brush strokes. So I think what I'm going to do next to those little skinny ones. A little me 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 me. I'm gonna do like a ula 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 ula. And I'm gonna add a little color. The thing is though is I don't want to cover up that cool background I got going. I want to leave some of that background. So I mean the background under the bed, you know the way I do. layers, being able to see through the specific to the whole. So what color could we use down in this corner? I think we could use a little of this burnt orange, don't you? But you don't want to be too matchy-matchy. 
So I'm not going to do exactly the same burnt orange. I am going to do something a little toned down. Hmm, one of my favorite colors for some reason. This one. And I'm going to do the thing that I talked about last time where I just put a little dibble dabble on my paintbrush. And then when I paint, it's just sort of mixed in there as if I had a full palette of paint and I was just mixing and painting freely. This is how you fake being free. So, to you. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Okay, uh, I'm going to just do some big brush strokes. Yeah. Oh wow, see? And then when you see something that looks cool for no reason other than it just does. <sighs> and it doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. In a good way. You know, there's too much of this burnt color in here. That's how beauty is truth, and truth is beauty. I basically just stumbled into that. When you see something that looks good, that's a really helpful tip, actually. Seriously, a variety of brush strokes. Yeah, that helps. But, uh, helps for the dynamism. You know, when you see something that's just beautiful and its own for its own sake, I don't mean like flowers necessarily. It could be this like, you know, back of Costco parking lot color mixed in with some white and it just hits you and then life is complete. I don't know why that works that way, but it's not just me that has said that. Beauty is truth, truth, beauty. That is all you know on earth and all you need to know. I didn't do much in college, but I do remember that quote from uh, John Keats. Must have meant something to me. That was before I started painting. I didn't paint, start painting until I was 30. So, I'm just turning this sheet falling down into sort of like, this feels like a landscape. Mm. You know, it's like, I don't know. Do I like it? More, more, a better question is, am I feeling it? Does it feel good? Does it feel good to paint? Yeah, sort of. Okay, diagonals feel good. I'm feeling my way through. Diagonals feel good now. Mm hmm. <gasps> and once again, I just got a message from the universe. I was doing those diagonals and they felt good. And the collage piece of paper I have over here is the diagonals like this. So, hey, that's why it felt good. Because some part of my consciousness knew that I was operating within the logic of this painting, which is an alternative world. Did you at least like art class in school? Um, honestly? You know what? I was really hard on myself as a kid, too. I, was, I had a friend, Wendy, Wendy Rowe, who could draw really well, like horses really well. And she had horses, and she could draw horses, and you know. And I really felt inadequate drawing. And I made her a card for her birthday. And I it had a dog in it. And, um, it, but I couldn't draw that well. Anyway, um, I was saying to my mom, I have nobody, I can't draw like Wendy. And my mom said, yeah, but you're drawing to make people laugh. <laughs> <sighs> Which
which I did not, that was not an insult to me. That was like a good moment. That was like my mom really saw me in that moment. Like, it's true. My drawings did make people laugh. I was funny as a kid. Even though if I couldn't draw. So what's happening? Oh, I'm confused. Ah, okay. I need to watch some YouTube videos on um, how to paint drapery and folds and fabric. My mom said I should be a stand-up comedian. <gasps> you should then. I mean, if you have it in you. That's what I should have been, but it's too late now. You're still funny. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Melicioso. Mel Melicioso. Okay. Um. Huh. I invented some bizarre thing here. I don't know what the hell I thought I was doing. Oh, that's what I thought I was doing. Oh, Jesus. You guys, I'm going to have to just stop using this as a model because it's so off. There's just no bringing it together again. Um, hmm, wow, yeah, okay, yeah, hmm, having some crazy ideas though. <sighs> Let me keep my paint wet. Well, Sashina, maybe you can paint and do stand-up comedy. That's what I'm doing right now, right? That's debatable. Uh, check it out. This drapey and this drapey. My situation is it starts draping right here. So what do I do? Do I throw this away? and just start painting. Okay, Arisa! The original doesn't go with the logic of your painting. Let it go. This is so helpful. This is like, this is so collaborative, isn't it? I hope you feel that way. You guys are really helping me. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Okay, what is, throw it away! Rip, well, I'm not gonna rip it up because I still need to reference it for a few things, but uh, I've gotta throw it away to do the mattress. So, the logic of my painting, oh, of course. Thanks, Arisa. You really did me a salad. I am going to do some diagonals this way and some diagonals this way to finish the sheet. Um, and then later, I might come in and draw some um, like fold folds with darker paint that make no sense. <laughs> that make no sense with the diagonals. I can do whatever I want. Now that's confidence. This is like therapy for everybody. Ha! Is it? Pretty therapeutic for me, actually. Why did I make, what am I doing? What am I doing? I don't know what I just did. Stop it, put this away. This is the dark color for the folds. I, I was talking about doing the folds and then I, my hands just did it. Seriously though, I'm so thirsty. Ah, this water's clean. Mm. In a really good way, this is what everybody goes through. I think that everybody goes through it 
we might as well call it good, right? You inspiring me to get through the challenges of the manuscript I'm working on. Hey! Of course you can do it. Confidence. Okay, I'm getting messages. Uh, confidence. Or I don't know if comp you, you got confidence. Oh my God, are you sure that wasn't paint water? Yeah, it's my spray bottle. Ooh. Maybe put it on mist. Oh no, that's stream. Come on, Kate. Paint. I'm gonna do some diagonals, and I think I'd like to introduce another color. Oh my God, are you sure that? No, nope, it was not paint water. Don't worry. It was clear water from the tap. need in this, in this, uh, what, what is the logic of the painting demand as far as color? Silver. You know where I got that? You know how I got silver? I'll tell you after I finish off putting in some more of this white. Uh, then don't let me forget. If I move on to something else, uh, I don't know about purple. I, 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 I don't, thank you for the suggestion, but... Actually, hmm, I'll consider that. Um, let me use up the rest of this because I just need to, I do just need to see what, where I stand. Okay, let me breathe. Mm, shh, quiet. Mm, mm, mm. Just need to see where I stand as far as um, filling in all this white so that So that I can see kind of the big shapes of the painting. Because right now you can't see shit. It's just like, oh wait, I was gonna put silver. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Um, I don't know. It still looks very confusing to my eyes. I thought that would help. Covering up a lot of the background that I really liked. So I think I need to stop now. Um, so, let me save my paint because, as you know, use your hands with gloves. Use your hands with gloves. What does that mean? looking out. Now it's acrylic. Um, and so they're going to be silver, chrome, you know. Um, and also the remote control is going to be silver. So I just had this thought, what do I finish off kind of the bot? What do I put on this bottom of the part of this painting? Silver spray paint. One sec, let me go get it and turn on the fan.
all about the games. <laughs> That's right. That is so true. Oh, and I have the, the gold spray paint going down, so I'm going to do this right underneath and finish off the sheet with this. Cool. I don't know. Actually, I think I need, now it just looks like it's just laid on top, so I'm going to paint some paint into it um, so it's more integrated into the painting. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. Okay, okay, okay. Whew, let me turn off the fan. And I'm gonna open the window. All right, so did that. Um, and here, let me show you something else. Because we are getting down to the last five minutes, and I want to show you where we're at and what the challenges ahead are. And hopefully, well, you know I'm going to do collage fabric on the, come here, laundry basket. I'm going to do that for next time. I think her, oops. I think her leggings should probably get filled in, or the legs should get filled in. Either one, way too much emptiness there. So... This thing needs to get all painted, okay? This drapery, um, the yellow, that, that really, really kind of like goes all along the bottom of the painting. And then um, the pillows are kind of a mess and I'm not totally sure about that blue. I don't, eh, now I'm kind of liking it. I might, should I just leave these pillows with the pillow fold wrinkle things, you know? Should I just leave it like that? I kind of like how it looks. I might. But I think I will paint this pillow in. Don't you think? I think so. Okay, well, that's looking good. Thank you going to extend the wallpaper up so that it kind of blends together this background and this background, sandwiches it together with a pattern, obviously her face, um, and then the laundry room. Hey, I actually really like the pillow part. Okay. Okay. It may turn out okay after all. Thanks to you guys. See what happened when I was by myself? I just went down the rabbit hole with that laundry basket. Um, the complexity is mind boggling. No, no shit. My mind is boggled. So, I don't know if I have any like wrap it up things except to say, I feel like we, we really covered a lot of psycho-spiritual territory today, and I needed that, and really appreciate you all being here. I shouldn't start wrapping it up two minutes ahead of time, because then we end up with this awkward situation where it's like, okay, well, like you say bye to somebody, and then you're both walking in the same direction. I won't do that. I would like to show you something. Let me see if this will work. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I want you to see the cat. This is the cat. I'm gonna paint this cat. But it'll be, it'll be or an orange cat. Um, Cause I, I like, I kind of like it's aggressive sort of a sort of, you know, it's kind of like the same vibe as Olympia herself as she was characterized back in the day. Ooh, countdown! Thanks for being here.
here next Wednesday at noon. It'll be up on Mills um, stories for the next 24 hours. I do. I do.